When you're on the mat, you want to control your opponent from the top position and escape or reverse to avoid the bottom position. Using your hips, arms, and feet effectively makes you a better wrestler in either situation. In the top position, using your legs and jamming, along with arm bars and near wrists, allows you to control your opponent. As you can see from this footage, we didn't have to scrub the mat after I wiped it clean by controlling my opponent. Although champion wrestlers don't find themselves in this position very often, they need to practice getting themselves out of tough spots, just like this escape artist. Like a Houdini, a wrestler on the bottom must use every part of his body to slip out of trouble. In this video, I'll share some effective advanced holds and skills for controlling your opponent on the mat and for escaping from those tough situations on the bottom. I'll be working with the Zadig brothers, Bill and Mike, both National Collegiate All-Americans and Freestyle Wrestling Champions for the highly successful Iowa Wrestling Program. They'll demonstrate the moves and drills that I've used over the years to help me and my wrestlers score quickly and effectively from the mat. Let's get started. As you notice here, we have uh, Bill without a headgear, Mike with a headgear. Uh, Mike just finished his collegiate career all through high school, all through college. Headgear is required. Actually, in, in competition, it's required. In practices, it's going to start being required in college. In international competition, you just don't wear one. Bill does a lot more international. He's just starting his, and he'll have to take this thing off, believe that or not. Tries to prevent cauliflower ears. The other thing I recommend are mouthpieces, which both of these guys wear when they actually wrestle in practice and in competition. Okay, we're going to start and we're going to go in right to the arm bars. It's mostly just capturing, and we're going to capture it from the base position. This is probably a position that most people wouldn't even think about capturing arm bars. We're going to do a little drill here just for capturing the arms, getting them back one and then the other. Bill here is going to do a little jamming action to a blanket ride. Blanket ride, and then as he pushes back, he'll, he'll swing the arm back, get the elbow through back, and then he, he pushes back into him, he captures both of them, and right there he pushes him, pushes him down. And basically, uh, when you're in practice, you need to learn how to capture them, and that's our object right now, just to capture. Let's do it again. Blanket, jam in, bring it back, thread that needle, thread that needle, hip into him, take him right to the mat. Arm bars, double arm bars. Arm bars from down on the actual mat. We do the same drilling action, jamming into him. He's down, he covers the head, takes, that isolates the arm, he pulls it back, the guy rotates down, he catches the other one, ends up in a good, tight double arm bar. Let's do that again. Jam action. He's flat down. He isolates that arm by isolating the head there. No power there. Gets it back with the elbow back. The guy rotates down. He swings it right up. He's got a controlled double arm bar right there. Another way of capturing arm bars is from a head post. And this head post puts the weight over here and he isolates this side here. Reach all the way through with the back arm and then now let your body kind of Pull, pull back, thread that arm. Now as he threads it, he'll pull down. You come up with your right arms and, and bring it back. Now we're going to do that again. Let go of this arm. This time when he has it there, I want his elbow to come back and use the elbow, slide it, and then thread it right there. Okay? So let's do it again. One more time. Head post. Arm comes all the way through. Now, real important for you to keep weight back over on his hip so he can't come up. Right there. Push. Keep a lot of weight over backwards. Walk back, thread it. As he comes forcing it down, you bring your elbow up, bring it back, and capture it right there. Once we get these arm bars tight, we need a post one side or the other. Since he's on this side over here, we're going to turn him from over there. We're going to post this shoulder, and we're going to end up driving him over as he comes around. Lead with your right leg, get him up to the post, step the right leg over, and put the left leg up on his chest and just kind of sag there. Now, a lot of times we won't get a fall here, but we'll get a near fall, and we'll get three extra points. So uh, that's because the arms are so tight with two of them. If you really want to get a fall, you've got to come back 
and you do the same post with the double arms and come up there but now once you get that post you pull the far arm out and he posts it right here post it right here and then he can come around and slide down chest to chest to get the fall over here to where the match is over okay we got the double arm bars this time we're gonna add a little drill to the bottom man it's called a swim drill it clears the arms one at a time it's gonna come back in knock the weight off and swim one side and he's gonna come back to the other side and swim out go ahead one arm two arm let's do that again capture it real quick capture it real quick get those arm bars it's, a, it's an explosive move. If you're a little bit wet, it works well. It's called swimming. Now, we want to prevent this because this is the top man move. And when he feels the swimming action, he's going to crowd and really take advantage of stacking. So as he comes back hard, you're going to run him. Boom, he's right there. Okay, let's go. Let me show you one. Let me help you here. Let me help you. Okay, double arm bars. I'm double arm bars here. He's coming back to swim. Come back to swim the arm out. Boom, run right there. See that? You actually load up just by going forward. If you stay back like this, he can swim out. But as he comes back, you just come forward. It stacks him. You can do it with a double arm. Or right now, if I got a single arm bar on it, from here as he comes back in me, I just, you just go forward. Right there it is. So now you end up there. You can come right around like you did before. You got your post and you can get your fall. Single arm bar, we've already captured the single arm bar, and we got the post over here, which is sometimes difficult, but we have it already posted. Now, a transition can take place here. Instead of just turning with the arm bars, we got other avenues for pinning as well. Anytime you get a tight arm bar, you can actually maneuver around to the point where you stack him up, and then as you slide around, slide around off him, you can see that there's an avenue from, from an arm turk. You got an arm bar and arm turk. They go back and forth, smooth transition. You can either turn the guy by lifting here and running him over, or come right back, or you can pick the leg up and step in with a leg turk. Pick it up, hook the leg, and you can turk the guy right over to his back, just like that. That's a good transition, arm bars, arm and leg turks. Okay, we're gonna go with legs in to capturing arm bars. Hardly anybody does this and it's open on their side, it's open on the far side, it's open on both sides. It's just a matter of being able to use your power with your legs in. A lot of kids use legs, but they only use them for like turning with the legs. They, they don't realize that the arm bars are wide open when you put legs in, and Bill will demonstrate. He's got a leg in, he's gonna, when he puts the pressure forward, that takes his arm back and opens up this wide open, he can, he can thread it right there, and then when he gets it, he'll roll down, and, and he rolls up and catches the other one right there, double arm bar. Okay, go back again. Leg in again. This time he's going to isolate the head with the elbow, and now he's, this, uh, this side's weak, and he brings it back. Now the guy rolls, and now you captured the other one. So you have, again, singles to doubles, legs in on the near side, legs in on the far side. So they're wide open. It's just a matter of being able to understand that they're available. We're going to go in with the legs again on an arm bar. I call this the Steiner tilt. It's a far side arm bar. Isolate the head, bring it back, drive the guy forward, trap that arm, deep waist over here, but you roll the guy back up over so you can see where you can grab his wrist right here. And now you can just roll him right up for a tilt, okay? Now, once you get your count or whatever, you can bring him back over again, back to his base and roll the other way. And a lot of times they'll give you another set of back points right there when he rolls the other way. You gotta learn to go one way, learn to go the other, then you're a double threat. Off the arm bar, once the hand is trapped, it's a pretty easy tilt. Sometimes you gotta use a little bit of hip action to get that opponent over. Uh, this next section is gonna be finishes of arm bars, mostly from a single arm bar, and there's several ways of doing this. First one's gonna be arm bar and far wrist. Bill's gonna reach in, once he, once he gets it there, instead of pulling it under, I like to keep that thumb almost wrist deep, I like to have his hips drive him up over to that shoulder right there. And now he, obviously he'll turn him to that shoulder there, and now he can pull the arm out and come around chest to chest to get the fall. Okay, again, we're gonna go from a arm bar now to a half. That was a far wrist, now we'll do a very similar move. Arm bar, jump across the far side, put pressure towards him on his head like this. The main thing is getting this guy's head down. Once you get his head down, now you roll him up, and then you, again, once you roll him up, you pull the arm out, and then you come around. 
chest to chest. You get the fall. More bar finishes. First one's going to be a, a cheap tilt, it's called. Uh, anytime something's worth three points, I don't call it cheap, but it's a good tilt. Here we go. Arm bar, hip with the right hand. Bring him over on your hips. Elevate with your leg here. Get your count. As he rolls back down to his belly, because he doesn't want to stay on his back, you just kind of roll with him and end up in a Dave Schultz post to the far side since the arm's under. There's this post that's isolating the head. Now you come off the legs, keep the weight backwards, and come right around chest to chest, get the fall. Here, Terry Brands uses Olympic and world champion Dave Schultz's patented arm bar to punish his opponent. This is two-time All-American Terry Brands. Couple more finishes here, this time from the double arm bars. At least we start from there. First one, we'll, we'll be keeping the double arm bars. We're gonna go into a stack position. It's, t it's tough to pin somebody here, but uh, you can go either way, but since he's on that side, he'll stack him up on this shoulder and roll around his head and get a, a good stack action. Could get a fall here, but it's pretty difficult. A lot of times it's hard to get this inside shoulder down. Therefore, you only end up getting uh, three points because it's so tight. Now come back, start again. This time we're gonna do the double arm bar. We're gonna go to a figure four head's head and trap his leg. We're gonna start out with a double arm bar. We're gonna come around, we're gonna post this shoulder. Once we get to post, we're gonna have to have some little more space. So we're gonna pull this arm out just like we did before, and we posted here, and we're gonna come across, we're gonna figure four, lead with the heel, scoop up the head, scoop that head up, get that head up there, and lock it up. It's a little bit difficult. You lock it up right there, it's gotta be in there. And now you, once you get that there, you come under the near side, over top the far side at the knee, and you hit an arch, and that puts the shoulders down, and I'll tell you once, once you get here, there's not much this guy can do. His shoulder blades will be glued to the mat. An old-timer here loved using this armbar and figure four to pin his opponents. We're gonna review capturing the near wrist. This goes back to the essentials tape where we actually did a hip spiral and then we ran him over his wrist and captured it. All right, review it, go ahead, hip spiral, arm run right over there do it again one more time hip spiral there's the arm runs right over capture that near wrist now a key thing here if we're going to add to it which makes it more advanced is as he captures that as he knocks him over to the side this time as he reaches in to capture it instead of running him straight here as he runs him he's going to put the weight over on the far side to make sure that he actually gets this shoulder the pivot point just like in the arm bars, you have to have a pivot point. You have to have a pivot point in the near wrist. So when you're running forward, you put a lot of weight on that far side. Right there, just like that. So that isolates the shoulder. Otherwise, the referee becomes involved. Capturing the near wrist requires two hands and leg drive. But once captured and pursued, can lead to other holes like arm bars. Okay, we're gonna go into a drill. It's actually a flow drill. It's named after a guy named Fedzaev from the Soviet Union. He used to turn a lot of people with this near wrist, but he did it all in one action, one flow, and it's more of a drill where there's no stopping. It's not parts, one, two, three, four, five. It's just one move. Bill's gonna execute it. Fedzaev, flow drill. Good, let's do it again. That was excellent. Notice he gets to that pivot point immediately because he doesn't stop. Puts all the weight over there. Near wrist, drives it over, puts the weight over there, uses his legs and hips and runs him right over. He automatically gets a fall. Three-time All-American Chad Zapital demonstrates good leg power and lift to the finish of Russian great Artsen Fedzaev's patented near wrist action. Oftentimes on a near wrist, this shoulder is up. So we're gonna show a little movement here that's gonna put this shoulder down and at the same time, turn his head to get that post. We got the near wrist this time instead of arm bar and we're gonna push over there to get that weight over there. See how his arm rolled? Now once you get there, you bring the near leg out, you, you turn it and you lift at the same time. Turn it, keep pushing. Now once you bring it up, you can thread it. And now instead of running it over, you, you kind of go back down underneath it, turning, 
try to get the fall. A drill here that we use off near wrist is to make sure that we can get some angles and some posts. And so what we do is we come up and we block with both knees on each side of the head right there. And I kind of, the reason why I call it a bolt drill is because I'm screwing my knees together. Like a bolt here comes out there. Now it doesn't go through the guy's head. It goes through his ears, obviously. But it comes out the other side and you really pinch them tight right there. And as you pinch them tight, now you got a good feel for it. It's kind of like this Bella Glossop drill we used in an earlier, earlier tape where now he comes up with his hips because there's no weight there and all he's going to do is kind of catch there and use his legs to tip him over. Now he comes, comes back up, now tilt him the other way. Come back up, you've got to be really tight here. You've got to use your hips just like that and use your hand to help knock him over because it's real key to do that because once you get a guy there, now you can always thread him and, and get the fall because if you don't if you can't get him over in that post, then you'll never get a fall. So this bolt drill, I'll tell you, it can get brutal. It can get brutal. Uh, this uh, tilt is going to be the opposite way that you normally go. We're trying to pull this near wrist out. We're trying to come around the head, but he's real flexible. He's keeping that shoulder down. This shoulder's up. He's over-exaggerating because he knows I want to pull this out. And then all of a sudden, you go with it, a real cheap tilt real quick, just catch him right there and hold him on his back. You're not going to get a fall, but you're going to get some counts here and you'll get back points. Okay, we're going to get in a situation here where he's got a near wrist, but he's not able to do anything with it except hold it there because the guy really has a lot of weight over on it, over here. And so what he's going to have to do is go back to this head post drill and he's going to be able to reach under. He might have to lift even a little bit with his leg here to get it up and then he pulls it out and puts it on his back 90 degrees. Let's back up a little so you can see it. When you pull it out, kind of back off and put it down. Do it again. Near wrist, pose, head post, reach it out and put it right in 90 degrees. Now the rule is you have to be no more than 90 degrees right here. If you go more than 90 degrees, it's illegal. So you have to keep it tight there. That's why when you pull it out, you, you immediately cover it a little bit in case it is past 90 so nobody sees it. But uh, uh, Really, you don't want it to go past 90 because it's not effective. One of the first things you do from there is you can come back off of it and you can thread it, actually lift it up a little bit and thread the deep half there. Make sure this arm goes in tight right there. Then you just drive the guy right over, which you can go to a fall there. It's a fine line there, whether you're legal or illegal. If you start lifting it, put the arm behind the back. If you start lifting it straight up, back off a little bit. That's illegal. You cannot lift it this way. All you need to do is lift it up a little bit with this arm here. Straighten it out actually. You straighten it out and then you thread it. Then that'll help you end up be able to keep it legal. Keep it legal. All right. Another one. Have the arm behind the back. Arm is behind the back. Post it. He's coming up there. You just come around front. Post. Come under the far arm. Lock it up. And then you just kind of you got you to stay tight and come around, catch the head, put him right to his back. Now that's a real simple one that you can do, but you need to know how to go around front and that's where that post drill comes into effect sometimes, where you really can pinch the head. Another one is simply from the near wrist, when you get it on the back, is when he comes up a little bit, you can step right over with your leg. Come up, step right over and just continue to drive. Just continue to drive with your leg. You can actually tilt him, just tilt him over. All he did was step over with his leg and drive, drive across. Controlling the near wrist behind the back can often lead to a leg step over for even more control and sometimes a fall. Okay, we have the arm behind the back again. It's isolated. It's not past 90. And now all we're going to do is come around behind and we're going to switch hands. And we're going to thread the arm for an arm bar right there. You see what he did? Start that again. He has the arm. He switched hands there. As he comes around behind, now he can thread the arm bar. Now as the guy gets this, he'll come back and he'll thread the other one. So now we end up with double arm bars and we're back to our finishes again where we turn them with a stack, double stack, or we, we let it go and go one. But this is a good position and we saw a lot of finishes earlier. We're going to go in to the tight near wrist underneath to some cheap tilts. Two pointers, three pointers. First one's going to be at the hip. He's pushing in, the guy comes up with the hip, and he just knees in and rolls him over. Gets his five count. Okay, go back over. He has the same near wrist. This time, the guy's kind of 
squirming around, a little, squirming around a little bit and he comes in the crotch this time. He actually locks the hands underneath. He'll get the hand locked. And now you can see it in a minute when he rolls him up. Rolls him right up, you'll see those hands locked right there. See, got the near wrist and the hand locked and he gets his uh, five count. Now as he rolls back over, he's going to go back to that Fazayev flow drill. He's going to end up taking him the other way. He's going to come right back in, run him right over. He's going to get his fall that way. So these things work in transition just like the arm bars did. We go to another near wrist, but we're going to go to a half Nelson on the far side. Mike's reacting a little bit. He opens that far half up. He puts it there, but then he pins it tight and runs it to the mat. So he has this point there. Now he can drive him over and end up in a real deep half, which gets a fall almost every time. Okay, this one is really a different move. It's called a bar Nelson on the head with the leg in. But it goes back to kind of the arm bars. Many people don't realize when you have legs in, it opens up a lot of arm bars and near wrists. So we're gonna leg in, and we're gonna bar this half right here, here and here. And as he's putting pressure on him, Mike's gonna roll to the right. As he rolls, that hand came right under, which puts him an opportunity to get a near wrist, and he goes right into the flow drill real quick, push him right through and run him over. It's real simple, but let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm gonna let more flow. Leg in, bar Nelson. He resists with the bar. He rolls his arm right under. You roll right through there. Push hard with the head, roll it right through. There he is. Perfect. Arm Turks and Leg Turks. We're gonna use it from the base position. Mike's gonna be on the bottom, Bill's gonna be on top. We're gonna to attack from referee's position. Arm Turks and Leg Turks. These holds are definitely excellent as well from a standing position off leg tackles. High crotches, you can go right into arm turks and leg turks to get near fall points, and of course, you can end up with falls. So we'll start here with Mike in the down position. Bill's gonna be on top. All he's gonna simply do, he's gonna reach down to the outside ankle. He's gonna trap that, and he's gonna reach through, he's gonna catch there, or he could even come to the inside, right here, right over top there. He's gonna drive with his shoulder, keep his shoulder in. Drive him over to his hip. At the same time, he already has an arm in. Now he's got to switch to the right arm. To, that is his arm Turk arm. Now he can overhook here and pick up the knee and drive over for back points. Or, as he comes right back, instead of just using the arm, he can step the leg in. Heel all the way in deep. Heel all the way in deep here. He can pull this arm out and then overhook and drive him over for back points. Arm Turks and leg Turks from the base position. That's just one position. Second one is, is simply picking up the near leg up in the air and then stepping right in with the leg and taking him exactly the same way over. Third one, a real, not a mistake, but a maneuver this, the bottom position does, he reaches up and grabs a wrist. Once you do that, you capture it. Come to the side and do the same move. Lift the inside leg, step in with the Turk, hook the leg, you got the leg Turk. Now that we've walked through these arm and leg Turks, we're gonna go back and start over again. We're gonna do them at, at a quicker pace. Far ankle trap, hit it hard, drive in there, pick it up, switch over, arm Turk, or come right back with the leg. Leg Turk, okay? Back to the base position. This time, lifting and driving with the near leg lift. Coming right in, turking right there. And lastly, of course, trapping the arm. Takes away the post right here. Same type thing. He grabs a hand, grabs it, picks it up, goes right to his back, and get back points immediately. A variation off this arm turk when you're trying to pin the young man is the bottom man kind of panics and he tries to roll through. As he rolls through, Bill here catches him in what's called an over and under. Navy right out east, Osage here in the Midwest, and he pushes him here and he picks him up and as he's trying to pin him, he panics again, he rolls back the other way, so he drops back down to this arm Turk. And again, he panics, so he goes back the other way, now he catches him here and now he'll just pick him up and drop down and eventually he'll catch a fall there, even though it runs back and forth. Here, world and Olympic champion Tom Brands is making body and chest adjustments to his opponent's squirming, which will tighten the position, leading to a fall. 
We're into arm turk finishes into pinning combinations. First one's going to be real simple. Arm turk, Bill's going to half Nelson here. Notice how he puts the pressure here hard down on the shoulder, and then he obviously picks a knee and just drives him right over. It's a simple pin. Okay, secondly, arm turk, this time he's going to catch an elbow here and shoulder and do an arm bar there as he lifts and twists, takes a guy over with an arm bar. And sometimes this actually arm bar will end up on the back as well, all the way through. Simply from there, right to there on top there. Okay, third, we're going to have an arm turk, deep waist. Deep waist, all the way. Sometimes you have to jerk a little bit to get him up in the air so you can get a deep waist right on the hip there. And you twist and keep your shoulder in tight. And he kind of twists him right over, corkscrews him right over to his back, just like that. Okay, and then lastly, arm turk and lift. When the guy's really tight and he's crawling forward a little bit, all you do is stop his momentum there and you just jerk him in the air with your hips and legs, take him straight over, stack him up right into a cradle situation right here. Lock it up, cradle on his back fall. Now we're going to do the arm turk finishes at a more regular speed. You got to remember also that that arm turk has to be wrist deep, not finger deep, down in here. And then when you're doing these turns up here, you got to make sure that you control so he doesn't slide forward with, it, with that near hand. Okay, arm turk half. Boom, right over. Arm turk, arm bar. Pull that behind him. Twist it, run him right over. Arm turk, deep. Waist, twist it, arm turk, crawl, he crawls forward and lift him and take him right over and stack him into a, a cradle. Boom, right up in the air, right there. Now one thing to look out for in arm turks is a situation that I want to make sure that the top man's aware of and that's keeping a deep shoulder. Just like when you shoot high crotches and you cut corners, you got to keep your shoulder in. So go ahead, Bill, go for the ankle. See right here, it's real important to this shoulder. Actually, it's his back shoulder to stay in. As he drives him over, he's going to try to switch. Okay? He's going to try to switch there. Now, he actually can just come right around if he doesn't get the... If the shoulder comes out, he comes right around. Alright, so now we're going to do it again. He's going to keep the shoulder in tight. He's going to go for the switch, but he's going to stop him. Alright? Hit it. Yeah, see how he ends up? We're going to show this in a different angle to make sure you understand. Going for an arm turk here on the leg. As he comes around, he goes for the inside switch and he keeps his shoulder in there, keeps him isolated so he can't get his hip out. We're going to do some top control from sit outs and switches into pinning. And when I say sit out and switches, it's really the same because when somebody switches, as he switches, you just move around behind him a little bit and you end up in a sit out. So we're mostly going to work from the sit out. Okay, start again here. First one's going to be a snapback. Mike here does these a lot when people set out on him. Go ahead. Sits out, he comes to double unders, and he makes way by leave space, moves back, pulls him back, and then usually his shoulder's still up here because he's, he's kind of holding him up with his arms, so he has to make a transition with the outside arm there over top the head, and he locks it up and gets a fall. Okay, let's do it at a faster pace here. Set out, snap back, boom, and then switch off. Looks good. Okay, let's go right into uh, another situation of this set out and switch. This is called a, a crunch cradle. He hits the set out, Bill hits the set out, he comes up and crunches the head down to the knee, and he comes around, makes space for the shoulder, brings it back, puts him right on his back. If he makes it a good adjustment, the shoulder should be down flat. The next one, right off this crunch, and this time he comes around, that's the cradle. This one is a little variation. We had a young man named Jeff McGinnis do this quite often, hit it there, push in, drop the head around, pick up the knee and pick up the leg and take him straight back right there, just like that. Let's do it again. Let's do that one again. Let's get more of a turn. Come right around. Once you get there, you're in the set out, you crunch into him and come right there. Very good. Very good. Then lastly, he hits a switch, and he's just going to pull the arm out, and then he's going to pancake. He hits a switch, pull the arm out, and pancake him right down, just like that. One more time in the last one. You've got to make sure that you make an adjustment on this with your head. Comes around, put the head to the inside, bang him right down. He ends up in a headlock, actually. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna do some attacking from the top position off the bottom wrestler's stand-ups, whether he does an inside stand-up or whether he does an outside stand-up. So we're gonna hit cradles. Inside cradle on the inside stand-up and the outside cradle on the outside stand-up. So we'll start off with the inside. Bill, inside stand-up, comes up in the air, crunches his head down to the knee. Now he's gotta get this leg under. Actually, put it right on his leg there. Put it right on his leg, right there. And he gets elevation, takes him all the way over and comes all the way up on top. Come all the way on top. There's no shoulder there, only mat, and he gets a fall. Why don't you hit that just one more time, inside cradle. Just do the whole thing on your own. Just one good time. Outside cradle is the next one. Bottom man comes up with an outside leg. The key is to come up, go ahead, and crunch that head down, and then make the adjustments right there, and then take him back. And make your adjustments so your shoulder can come down in. All right, let's do that one more time. Make sure that you crunch the head, come up, get elevation, crunch the head down. Outside leg, stand up, boom, there you go. Outside cradle, inside cradle, outside cradle. Uh, this last action is gonna be from a stand up. It's illegal, I believe, in high school, and in college, it's looked upon as a potentially dangerous situation because you can really use this guy's momentum on a stand-up and you pop your hips under and you really go back to what Mike did earlier to a snap back on a set out. So we'll go ahead and try it. Uh, the Joe Williams Flight School off a of stand-up. And you can see Mike actually controlled it pretty well. You can see where it could be a little dangerous and if it gets out of control, referee would call it a slam or illegal move. Let's do it one more time. Off the stand-up, you don't want to wait, you don't want to stop and then hit it. That's two moves. You want to hit it right when he comes up with his momentum as he lifts. We're going to show a couple actions from side rolls and grambies. First one's a very common mistake that's made when someone hits a side roll where he grabs their arm, he throws the half, he gets his hips too high and gets rolled through and he ends up getting reversed to his back. See, that's what happens when he gets uh, out of position. So we're gonna come back and show how to stop a side roll with a sagging hip and a half Nelson. Counter a roll by sagging and posting the hand on the right side and then taking him right over. Okay, let's go into a, a Granby roll, which Obviously, you know what a Granby roll is because you watch the Essentials tape, but quick, hit a quick Granby. Boom, there's a Granby roll for one point. This time, Bill here is going to stop that Granby and stack him right on his head as he hits it. Boom, it's right there. Just it's called a stack. Let's do it again. Just kind of float those hands out, both of them as he comes there and catch the hips. Just right there. Good. Here's another good little tilt. It's called an outside ankle neck bar and it's uh, an old Arizona State wrestler used to do it all the time. It's, it's simply off a jam, and then you just kind of stack the guy right on his back. Jam him, outside ankle, neck bar, hook it under the arm, and just kind of hip into him and pop him right to his back, right there. Okay, let's do it again, one more time. Get all those actions. Jamming, hipping in, hooking the neck bar, popping up. Yeah, real good, real good. Tom again demonstrates how quickly one can go from riding to a quick tilt leading to back points. We're going to carry on into the uh, bottom position. A lot of our action was done with hip heist action in the essentials. And Bill here will, again, just review the hip heist real quick. It's whether you're on your base position or on your butt, he just hit, hits a quick hip heist back and forth, it's just like this. It's great counters for takedowns, and it's also great action for switching, uh, escaping, reversing. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a inside-outside switch hip, ac hip action here, just to show you this drill here. He uh, actually goes, instead of coming all the way through, he just goes to a switch, comes back, comes back, goes the other way. So he's doing inside switch and outside switch right at the same time. Just like this, right back and forth, right back and forth. Keep it going. Okay, good. Now another good shadow wrestling drill is to simply hit a stand up. We call this a Japanese stand up where you're actually putting your feet where your knees are. 
And notice he's, he's standing up here or sitting down, but he's got his back straight. He's got his arms behind his back. Not going to use his hands. He's just going to put his feet where his knees are, and he's going to do it eight, ten times just to show you a good drill there. Go ahead. One, boom, right down. Boom, right down. Very important that you have a mat underneath so you don't wear on your knees there. Knee pads. Just, it's a good drill that we use right there. Good. Good action. We've had a lot of emphasis on hip heist action, switching outside, switching inside. We're going to go to the switching on the inside position. Bill here is going to set it up by just crawling forward about a foot. Then as Mike reaches in, he's going to hit his switch, inside switch action. Come around, end up in the crotch. Okay, do it again. It's very important for Bill here to make sure when he gets his hips out that he follows through with a, a good hip heist action, not where he's just pushing in, that he's bringing his legs out. Okay, hit it. Good, real good. Right along with this is a first step of an inside leg stand up. Where that first leg comes up, the bottom guy will be actually dropping down. It's very similar. Now he hits that inside switch, comes right around. Again, one more time. These are two setups, crawling forward once and then inside leg stand up, coming right around, getting the hip out and coming up, ending up in the crotch, not around the waist. Here, national champion Chris Bono takes advantage of his opponent's positioning to score an inside switch to help even things up. Okay, this action looks a little bit fancy, but it's, in reality it's a very good uh, escape or reverse for the, the man that does the switch. Uh, what happens is Bill's going to do a switch, he's going to step over, which kind of a last resort for the top man, a step over, but it does work sometimes, but he also knows what to do when he does step over. So we hit a switch, comes around, he's starting to step over, they're scooting, and he just rolls right up and comes up on top. So he ends up with a reversal. Let's do it again. I'm gonna let you do it on your own. Let's get some kind of a good, let's get in a good little action fight there where you're actually trying to step over and trying to scoot. Three or four times, ready, hit it. Step, 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 stay in there, stay in there. Boom, 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 good. Good job. This is going to be a drill. It's called the switch re-switch drill. We're also going to add some variations after the first initial switch re-switch. All right, hit it. A couple more times, guys. Good, good. Okay, let's go right in to the switch, re-switch drill, and we're going to end up with a winner. And he's going to do what's called a hip heist at the end to win. A couple, three, four times in hip heist. Switch, re-switch, switch, re-switch, switch, re-switch. Re now, let's hip heist right out. All he did, instead of coming around on top, he did that hip heist drill movement where you set your hip and leg under, and you're out for one. We're continuing to show the switch, re-switch drill, but now we're going to add, when he roll him through to win, to come up on top. We're staying with the switch action. We're going to do a couple combinations here. We're going to do switch and then hip heist once his hips are sucked in. And then we're also going to do switch, his hips are sucked in, and then we're going to do a reach back type of toss from there. We're going to get a, an escape and a reverse. Okay, let's do it kind of, uh, kind of slow so I can talk you through it. Switch, he sucks his hips in, and now he just does a hip heist through, just right out. Notice how he throws that arm over and hip heists them hips out. Okay, secondly, he's going to do a switch. He's going to get his hips sucked in. He's going to come in. He's going to come back to a reach back. He hooks the lats here, and he hooks up front and steps over for a fall. Now let's do, a, let's do it in, in live action. Switch, hip heist, switch, reach back. Ready. Hit it. Switch, hip heist. Switch, sucks the hips in, reach back, toss, step across, pin. We're going to take this similar type action that we just did on the mat. We're going to move it to a higher level on the feet. Bill here is going to hit a stand up and he's going to look for hip heist escapes. He's going to look for reach back reversals and he's going to look for whizzer escapes or reversals. So we'll walk through it at first. Bill hits a stand up, he's up, he fakes a little motion for a switch and he comes out to his. Uh, his hip heist for one point escape. That little fake there threw him off a little. 
give him a chance to move his hips. Second, second one, he's going to come up here. And he's going to fake a little bit. Now he's going to do a reach back right there. He catches the lat back here. He hooks there. He's going to actually, you can go ahead and toss him easily from there. And he tosses him to the mat for a reversal. And you get a guy on his back. And then lastly, we're going to do what's a real common escape from there. Can be on the mat or on the feet. He hits a stand up here, comes up, he does a little fake action, he comes to a wizard action and just follows through. Okay, let's put them together now in a little bit more live action. Stand up, hip ice, stand up, reach back, toss, stand up, wizard. Ready? Hit it. Stand up, one point escape, hip heist. Stand up, fake a switch, hit a reach back, toss. Boom, right to his back. That one's a little dangerous. You have to watch that one. And the last one's the wizard. Again, you get that fake hip action. Stand up, you fake one way or the other. You get a wizard, toss it, escape, and you're out for one. Now we're gonna have a little close-up action here to make sure you understand where the hands go, whether it be on the lat or the head and the arm. So we're in this switch position. Bill's gonna reach back. As he reach backs, he catches the arm right here, right there, and if you turn him a little bit here, you can see where he catches the lat right here. Or he can also let go and catch the head right there. The same action can be down on the mat. Go down to the mat, go ahead and uh, do your reach back. You can see where he has a, a lat here, of course the hand's over here, but if he wants to, he can drop it to the head right there. Now, one of the things is, if we can move it around a little bit here, a different angle, right here, what, what happens if you take just the head, Mike can roll him through as he takes him right there. Now roll back, get right back up, get right back up here. Or from here, he can actually, as he rolls him down, he can scoot, scoot and come up on top. That's why, let's get back there again, here's what you want to do. You want to eliminate that action. As you roll with the neck, Bill's going to pull the arm out and post and go right into a headlock, which will eliminate that roll or scoot action. The next action is going to be a stand-up to a standing roll. Bill here is going to hit a stand-up. Mike does a good job of coming in and countering. He's, he brings him up with his hips underneath him. Now he's going to sag and hook an ankle right there. Just an ankle and he's going to walk a couple steps and then fly through the air. Now he's going to do a hip heist action, come around for a fall or reversal. All right, let's do it again. Okay, we'll do this in a little bit live action. Ready? Hit it. He's up there, he's pulling him in, he's taking, he's taking, he's flying through the air, just like that. Very good. We're going to get into what's called standing Gramby. It, it can actually keep an athlete from getting any points scored against him, like you're going to see right here. Mike's going to hit an arm drag, he's going to come around, pick him up, and he's going to try to score an easy takedown, but Bill's going to Gramby right out before there's any even action, no points. You can also start from the bottom position. Now he's going to get an escape because he's coming up to a stand up. He, Mike's going to pick him right up and he just grambies right out, gets one point escape. So it can be neutral or it can be one point. That's it, buddy. A former Iowa State wrestler uses the standing Gramby to break away from his Hawkeye opponent. That same Gramby action we just witnessed, we can also add to that kind of a front roll, which Mike will demonstrate here in an escaping position, but you can remember also it can be done from a neutral position as well. Bill pushes into him hard, he just hits a front roll and they come up scrambling neutral. Or here, one point for an escape. Here, the forward roll eliminates the scoring of a potential takedown. Okay, we're going to get into uh, a stand-up and then the old lifting drill. And it's actually a lift to take him back to the mat. This time, Bill's going to show how he stops that lifting action. Okay, hit a stand-up, come up. As he tries to lift him, he hooks right there. That, that's good action right there to keep him from getting lifted up in the air. He tries to lift him, he can't get him up in the air. So finally, if Bill wants to, he can just lean and hit that side roll right there. Get a reversal. This last action is going to be a stand-up into another roll. And Bill here is going to actually hit a stand up and hit a standing Gramby type action where he counters Mike's lift. Okay, go ahead and stand up here. Mike comes around the lift. He reaches around. He has to step out and behind. He has the roll, roll wrist here 
and he hits the roll. Ends up with back points and a reversal. Okay, let's come back in and let's do it at a liver pace here. He hits the stand up, he comes right around and whips him right to his back, just like that. This next series involves, and when you look at it, it just looks simple. But it's really quite complicated if you don't do the simple things. And that's just making sure you get to the inside, get the guy over your arm, and also just being able to hip into him a little bit to get the weight off of you. Those are simple things, but the move becomes complicated if you don't do those. Here's what we do. From the bottom, he pushes back, the weight's off, he gets him over, and all he has to do is reach through, reach back, and he's out. That's simple. Okay, we can do the same thing from the upper level. He's got around the waist, he pushes his hands down, gets the elbow to the inside, and then all of a sudden he just reaches through, just like that. Okay, let's do it down at a quicker pace and escape. Sit back, reach through, ready. Hit it, boom. Good, good, real good. Okay, let's do it from the stand up now. He's up high, go ahead and get up. Actually, start from down there, get your stand up, and then do it from there, ready? Hit the stand up, push down, reach right through, and he's out. Real simple, he's over the arm, and you dig and you're out. We're gonna do a little uh, countering or escaping and reversing to a crab ride off a set out. Mike's gonna crab ride off Bill's set out. Go ahead. Then once he gets here, Bill here is gonna come back and isolate this guy's head and bridge back into him and just end up coming out for an escape right there or a reversal. He's also going to do the same thing. That was one hand isolation. This time he's going to do a two hand isolation and hit a high bridge and hip ice through. He scooted down and hip ice it right through for a reversal. And you'll get a fall here. Okay, let's do it quick now. Set out, crab ride, one hand isolation, and then two hand isolation. Ready? Hit it. One hand isolation, boom. Spin right through there. Good. Let's go right back down. Set out. Crab ride, two hands, come right back around, reversal to a fall. Wait, wait, wait. Simply listening to your coach can result in escaping the crab ride. What we're doing here is Mike has a strong power leg in here and he can really apply a lot of pressure to Bill's back and legs and almost try to turn him. What happens is Bill needs to ease a little pressure so when he's putting the power there, he's going to bring a knee forward. That just isolates and takes a lot of pressure off this. At the same time now, instead of rolling him, he kind of pushes back and puts him in a position where he can high leg over and get a reversal or an escape right there. Okay, let's do that fast. Mike has the leg in. This is clearing legs. He has the legs in. He's strong. He's a power leg. He's cranking on him, and he eases the pressure, and then he just rolls him right backwards and comes up right across the hip. So it's kind of like a high leg over series as well. We can see here, Mike has a power figure four on the Bill's leg. And what's, what we're gonna do here is have Bill, with his free leg and ankle, reach up and peel off that figure four, and then he'll come right into a position where he can build his base to get an escape or reverse. Okay, let's try it again. Power leg in, and again, you gotta remember, you got you have to sometimes use your feet like their hands, so you got to unhook this. So his feet comes in, breaks it, and builds a base. Here we have a position with top man with both legs in. He's a little high. It could have started from the top position or it could have started from a takedown position, but he's trying to hang on. Bill on the bottom is going to tripod up or kind of both legs up here. He's going to try to shake him to get him off. He's not quite off yet, so he's kind of like going to roll him over and isolate the head, hit the back bridge here, just like we did in the crab ride, and hip high through and get his reversal and his pin. Let's do it one more time, real quick. Trying to break him down to the mat with both legs in, up in the air with his butt, shakes him, feels like, isolates the head, rolls through, hip high through, gets a reversal and the pin. What we have here for clearing legs is Mike has a cross body, he's across the body with a leg in, and he's hanging to the far side. Bill's gonna do a hip heist action to the inside. He's gonna actually do a swivel action to get a reversal here. Comes to the inside, it's like switching action. He gets here, and then he has to swivel again quickly to come up on top. If you get there, get there again quickly, 
and he swivels the first time through and he doesn't stop and doesn't try to get this elbow through what happens is he just lifts his leg there and puts him right back on his back so the second move right here is really important you swivel and hip ice quick right through to come up on top let's do it all at once cross body two swivels in a row ready hit it boom boom right up good action okay we got Mike here with a cross body this is a Deanna ankle trap Mike Deanna reversed him with this ankle right here he kept trapping his ankle and came back into him like the same action swivel swivel again you gotta reverse one more time you do it on your own once you get it it's a little complicated but it works pretty well ankle trap boom boom perfect what we have here is another cross body with the ankle hooked here Bill's gonna come up in the air with it as he comes up in the air you can see the ankle still hooked and what he's going to do here, he's going to hit a shoulder roll over here. We kind of call it a mule kick roll. And the reason why is because you've got to straighten this leg out strong to clear this ankle right here. So you end up, otherwise you'd end up in the same position after you'd roll. But this, if you mule kick this leg, you clear that ankle and he can clear it. Go ahead and try it. Okay, let's go one more time, guys. Cross body in. Elevate the hips. Ankles hooked. Now Bill has to roll and really mule kick this leg out to be able to get out. Boom. Clears that leg and they both are in neutral position. Mike here is riding Bill's ankle. Common ankle hook ride which a lot of athletes really don't know how to get out. In the essentials we hipped in and did a hip high set out action. Here it's a little bit more complicated. This one's actually going to be a roll back into him where he traps the ankle again right here. He comes over and he traps so he can't fall and he hits right there. Now to clear this foot here, he kicks here on the knee, comes out to a, a high leg over and gets a fall. One more time. Ankle's hooked. Now you got to remember he's hooking, he's hooking over here on the wrist, cross wrist or near wrist, and now he's hooking the ankle. He's whipping him over to clear it. He, he hits there and he comes right out. Okay, one more time. Let's do it fast. I'll let you guys do it. Rolling back, whipping, pop it, and come right through. Talk about action. We have some good action here. The top man's going to pick up an ankle, ankle rider right here, around the waist, ankle, and he's picking it up and trying to drive, and Bill here is going to go with it and try to high leg over. Boom. He gets right on his hips and just high legs right over and gets a reversal and a fall. Sometimes in this action, because it's such a scramble and he doesn't quite get over on his hip on his chest he ends up coming over he ends up right there he just scrambles away for one okay let's do it fast though let's do it at real time high leg over or scramble whatever is comfortable hit it drive boom scramble away for one good let's, let's do it again let's end up getting over there on trap that chest pick that ankle up drive him a little bit go lift the ankle and run it back over come right over and get the reversal okay not too bad now key thing on that let's go back one more time is to remember when you have to elevate that leg when he picks it up when he picks that leg up as he's driving you have to really hip into him and elevate it boom that knocks him right over and then you get your points okay these aren't for everybody especially if you haven't done a lot of wrestling because they're a little bit against the basics but if you're a good wrestler you can hit some moves from any positions in this position Mike is going to be going over the arm a little bit which is a mistake in wrestling Bill's going to capitalize it and hit an arm throw there and then high leg way out way over just to get a reversal okay let's do it one more time fast and let's get a good whip and a good high leg over he's over the arms he jams him forward he arm throws him hard and comes right over and there he has him right in his back Okay, this action is going to be when a guy on top gets a little high on his riding and he clears the hips back here, which gives Bill here a chance to step right over and hook a leg and get a reversal. Okay, so Mike's going to jam him forward, gets a little high, clears the hips, he steps right over. Now the key is to hooking this leg in because usually when you step over hips, the bottom man can raise it and put a guy right on his back. But if you hook the leg, he can't do that and he'll just dri keep driving him over and gets a reversal. Okay, I'm going to show you what I mean, though, when you don't hook the leg. Watch this. Bill's going to end up, uh, he's going to come here, he's going to step over. Mike's going to pop him right in the air and take him right to his back. That's what happens when you don't hook that leg. So here we go again. He's going, Bill's going to get the job done. He's riding high a little bit. He frees his hips, steps over, hooks that leg, and now 
takes him this way. And actually, he can get a reversal there, or if he can stay right in here, he can actually get a half, reverse half and take him right to his back. This last escape or reversal is when Mike gets a little high. He gets his ankle too close to Bill, and so Bill sees an opportunity to grab it, but instead of hanging on like a lot of people do, and then they end up getting ridden, he's gonna pick it up. When he picks it up, it's easy to get the high leg, and the high leg will win in escape or reverse. Let's do it again. Mike gets a little high, gets his foot close, Bill comes back, picks it up, comes right around, gets a reversal. And now we're gonna show a drill. This drill is a similar situation. Bill's coming back, picking up the ankle, but now not only is he gonna come up with it, but Mike is also gonna be trying to hang on to the ankles down here, same way. So he comes up, now Mike hangs on, comes around, picks up the ankle. Now he, Bill comes around, picks up, comes around, grabs the ankle. Now Mike comes around, picks up, comes around. Now Bill comes around, picks up the ankle. And this could go on forever, but right now it's mainly a drill and it's a great scramble action in wrestling. Both wrestlers are in a merry-go-round. Consequently, nobody gains or scores. If you can master these techniques on the mat, you'll be tough to defeat in any match. Escaping from the bottom and controlling your opponent from the top will have you cleaning up your competition.